Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again on another Halloween-themed October episode of Never Enough Gaming. I'm going to start this one off with a question. Elaine, have you ever seen something so horrible that you can't describe it with words? No. Well, today might be a first then, because we're about to dive headlong into the Lovecraftian horror that is Eldritch Horror. So let's start off with the basics. Uh, Eldritch Horror uh, has you playing a investigator. Uh, there's a lot of different characters. Like you can have this guy. This one's a redeemed cultist, and you, uh, you and your friends travel around the world trying to solve mysteries uh, that are related to the ancient one that you have chosen to be your antagonist for the game. This one's like kind of the big daddy, Cthulhu. And there's a doom track that goes along the top that uh, when you pull the, the bad cards, the mythos cards, you can advance the doom track sometimes. And if you fail at certain tasks, certain checks, it'll advance it as well. And if it gets all the way down, then you flip this guy over and you have a final mystery to solve. Uh, some of the other ones, will, you'll just die outright. You just lose immediately as soon as they awaken. And... Basically, by awakening this guy, even if you have that second, that extra chance, you've probably lost the game. Uh, you're traveling from city to city via different modes of travel. Like, you can have boat tickets and train tickets, depending on which city you're in. There's different routes that are colored on the map. Um, you'll also be trying to, like, close gates, which are where the monsters come from. So these little tiles, you can see, they get placed specifically on certain cities when you draw them. And... These are the monsters. There's other monsters. This is just a cultist. This is a specifically bad one for that one, considering she's a redeemed cultist. But um, and you keep track of your your health and your sanity here. If you lose any of these, if you get down to zero, then you know it's game over for your character. Your character gets tipped over, and you get to draw a new one, and you have to start over with none of your stuff. Um, Throughout the game, you'll you'll have to do draw these. These are mythos cards. These are the bad ones. Do investigations, which are encounter cards that you can kind of try and solve mysteries towards, you know, getting the the details about your ancient one that you're trying to fight. You can buy like items and things like that. So that's kind of the foundation of the game. Uh, I think we're gonna go into so our thoughts, some pros and cons, what we like, what we don't like. Okay, so let's get the bad out of the way first. Let's talk about some cons. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, this game is probably the hardest <clears throat> board game I can think of. I don't think I've ever <clears throat> actually won this game. It's a hard Come close board. a couple times, but... <laughs> Those ancient ones are tricksy. Like hobbits is. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I've never won. Maybe someday. Might be a while. Um... So that's, it's rough. It's hard to spend, you know, two hours, like I'm almost there, and then all of a sudden you just die. And your whole team dies, and all the monsters take over the world, and roll into yeah. tentacles and things. <laughs> um, I, definitely rough. I think a big thing on that note is kind of just the fact of how suddenly you can lose. Yeah. Because you could be going along, I know the last game that we played, we were kind of going along really nicely and it seemed like we were you know we had some clues going and we were kind of going along and then all of a sudden in the span of a couple of terms doom track was zooming along and the 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 ancient one that we were playing with you flip it over it awakens and you just lose there's no final mystery or anything like that and it just kind of came out of nowhere it was like, wow i thought we were gonna win for once uh so yeah definitely a hard game uh, the other thing that's kind of rough with this game, we kind of touched on that already, is this is a very long game. The average is two to three hours. I think we're more, we average around two, two and a half. Yeah. And that can be a bit much for some people. And it's just, it's even worse when you add more people. As soon as you hit that, like, six, six mark, it, it is physically painful to play this game. The sweet spot is definitely four to five. It does not scale well to larger groups yeah i mean 
I would definitely I would definitely not recommend going to six or above. A six is pushing it. If maybe if you have a group that plays this game a lot and can like shoot yeah. through it, knows what they're doing, and has like some strategy behind it. But if you have even one or two players that is gonna drag on their turn, like eight would be a nightmare trying to play on this game with the the amount of time it would take. Um, so yeah, definitely an agreement on that. Which is really unfortunate because part of the reason we bought this game is because you know sometimes we have parties and we have six or seven people and it's like well what do we play with six or seven people it's not a party game not that i don't like party games but sometimes i want something that's a little yeah tougher more strategic um and party games don't really deliver that so it, uh, this was an unfortunate choice as far as having something that scales well with the group um i think the, the first time few times we played it was hard to understand the rules i think the rule book is a little daunting like once you get it, it you're like oh it, it's not so bad but getting to that oh it's not so bad point is a little rough i think yeah. we're gonna read the rules a few times watch a few videos it's definitely a game where you're gonna be referencing back to the rule book while you're playing it's not one of those games where i feel like yeah. even if you're you've played it a fair like we've played it a handful of times at this point with different sized groups and just the fact that there is a rule book and there is a reference guide kind of tells you that this is basically the reference guide that points you to all the stuff in the rule book that you need to define all the terms and things that you're going to be using to explain the rules so i definitely each game have to pick up that rule book at least five or six times, I'd say, yeah. just to double check on something. Because there are certain things you don't encounter very often. Like, I feel like monster combat you don't bump into until you have to. And then you always forget how it works, and then you got to go look it up. Um, and so, yeah, definitely on the the kind of complexity of the rule book, I'd say, and how the rule book is arranged, not ideal. Yeah. tiny print yeah very tiny print um the other thing is this base game does not come with a lot of encounter cards if you play even the first time through you're probably going to go through them all or the vast majority and you're going to start seeing repetition within the first few times if not the first time that you play this game and that gets a little boring so the way around that is to buy an expansion this game has several expansions i, I want to say at least four Probably more like five or six. I'm not really sure There's where they are at this point. And you can buy one. The one that's suggested for um, getting those extra encounter cards is Forsaken Lore. And it's it's not particularly expensive. It's affordable. And it adds all those extra encounter cards so you don't have that, that repetition. But at the same time, it makes a hard game even harder. So, I mean, if you want to win sometimes, you might want to <laughs> take them out. That would be my suggestion, but if you really just don't like the repetition, you have to just grit your teeth and deal with it, unfortunately. I feel like um, in order to get to the point where you're winning on a fairly, at least like a 50-50 shot at winning the game, right. you, you have to play the same encounters over and over again to kind of realize how you have to encounter them. Because you have to do, there's things like rumors will pop up, clues will, yeah. gates will spawn, things like that. So you kind of have to handle which ones you're going to handle first. Every player kind of has to, you know, hold their weight. And by getting to the point where you know what the strategy is to encounter them all, you've kind of done the cards over and over again. You're kind of like, well, I have to handle this one first. This one can really sneak up on me. I have to handle this one next. And they, they, that. So at that point, it's kind of... Mm, the, f the flavor and the theme that you're kind of getting on it is kind of wearing away. It's kind of like mechanical at that point and just for you to have a shot at winning. Um, uh, what, about you what do you think about like the components? I mean, I think they're, they're strong components. I think thematically the game works very well. It's obviously based off of um, Lovecraft's works. Um, a lot of the Cthulhu elements come through and, you know, some things from Dagon and things like that. Um, obviously these little cardboard guys, like the monsters, are stronger than the cards, but the cards are, they're a good size, they're not those, like, little teeny ones that are, you know, like that little, like that kind of, that, I'm not doing this well, but, you know, like half the size and, like, half of the width, too. And yeah. You can't really read them, and you're like, what's the point? You can't pick them up. Um, and so, Text size isn't, you know, it's, that's readable. I can read that on a bad day. 
Um, There's a lot of text on a sm on on that card too. They managed to they yeah. they're good at laying out the text because the flavor is like a big thing with this this game, and they kind of have a nice balance with the flavor text versus the actual important text. And they have like nice little icons that kind of point you to the important stuff. Yeah, and they're not they're not flimsy. I mean, these aren't the highest quality cards I've ever seen in my life, but they're not terrible. I think we probably made a few marks on a few, but yeah. it, it, not not awful. Um, the other thing about this game is it has a very large board, and then on top of that, you have all these different piles of cards laid out, and then you have your your character card, and, and then the and the ancient ancient one, yeah, yeah. ancient one's uh, card, and it takes up a lot of space. This is not a game you can play on a small table. This is like your dining room table game <laughs> to be manageable, especially with a larger group. Even with three people, it's kind of hard to avoid that larger table. So if you have a small table, if you have a small house, this is just not going to work. It's too big. Yeah. I, I would definitely say they it would have been better if they kind of made things a little more compact with those kinds of people in mind, because a lot of people don't have a big table yeah. anymore. Um, I mean, it was definitely my recommendation if you want to play this game, um, is like one of those big folding tables, like the, where you can kind of fold it down and put it away and then take it back out. But it's gotta be the bigger size one. It can't be like the short little card tables that you can fold up no. and it won't work. It just won't fit. Um, something I'm going to bring up in terms of the components is these guys here. I, this is the, as you watch more reviews from me, you'll probably see that this is the bane of my existence. I hate these little plastic standy things um, because they do this to the to the the player standees. They do little divots in the plastic uh, in the base here. And they so, mess up the artwork. Yeah, they mess up the artwork, and they always end up ripping, and it just ends up being messy. And um, I don't know why they keep doing that. I guess it's it's less expensive than making. Um, figures, but you know, just just throw the figures in there. I, I, I like plastic figures, even if they're not fully painted. They're not huge. Like I take small figures that just kind of have the representation of the character. I'm, I'm good with that, rather than using these little plastic standy things. I don't like them. Um, beyond that, in terms of the components, uh, I think I think they're you kind of covered it. The nothing's really flimsy. Like the little item cards are they're nice smaller ones. They have a couple of different types of these, worse like spells and artifacts and things like that. There's a lot of tokens, like the bags of tokens, um, to the the point where you you really need to um, separate them out. Um, it's a it's a fair amount of setup and a fair amount of takedown. Um, Definitely. When you're playing this game and just separating it all out like i'm usually somebody who likes to meticulously kind of separate my pieces but this one i kind of gave up on it because there's just so many different types of pieces so i just lay them all out at the beginning of the game um let's go with some uh pros well this is a very strong co-op game you definitely need to organize yourselves work as a team it's not something where you know one person can kind of carry you or one person gets to do a bunch of things and then the other two people are kind of just there for show it's definitely a very not necessarily the most balanced because i'd say it's skewed in favor of the bad guys yeah. uh because it's just so hard but definitely a good balance of who gets to do what based off of the skill set that your character has um i think it also is a very strong thematically like everything fits with you know lovecraft's writings the lore there's nothing that seems out of place like um we talked about earlier this month with werewolf where the cupid card and the leprechaun i'm just what is what is that doing there <laughs> that does not happen here everything that is in this game belongs in this game it makes sense uh, yeah and like reading some of the cards like i mean because you can see there's a lot of text and we kind of touched on it with the flavor text but the text is nice like the the stories behind them is kind of it's interesting like, you can actually kind of really dive into the lore behind it, and you can, uh, it's not like anything is set up like, oh, this is a fetch quest, or oh, this is a this kind of a thing that you're doing, but um, the, everything's kind of very strong thematic elements, and that kind of runs through it. All the artwork leans into that. Um, I've, n I've never been the, like, the biggest fan of this time period in terms of just anything like books that are, books or artwork or tv shows set in this time period but 
Um, if you're going to go with something like that, this breathes that kind of um, aesthetic. And it, it does a really good job of it. Um, I feel like Lovecraft... There's a reason why Lovecraft keeps getting used for games uh, like Arkham Horror and Mountain of Madness. Like There's, there's a lot of games that um, are flavored with Lovecraft, and it just it translates well, it, especially when it's done correctly. Yeah, and it has very strong, cohesive story. Well, strong as far as a board game is concerned, obviously. Uh, can't be as strong as, let's say, a book. Yeah. <laughs> Books are much longer. And they have more time to do all that. Um, like I said, the components are, are very great. I mean, you even get like these, like legitimately... Sorry, I'm totally covering that with my hands. That was stupid. Uh, Heart-shaped uh, markers to check your health. And then you have these these little blue brains. I don't know why they're blue. Maybe so they there's a sharp contrast between them and the heart, maybe. Um, for your sanity. or It's sanity, right? Yeah, sanity. Okay, I'm not or crazy. willpower. It's willpower. Yeah. yeah. Oh, will is this. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's sanity. sanity. Sorry, I confuse games sometimes. I think I do. <laughs> Um, I also like how your choices affect gameplay so strongly. Like, a lot of games, you're kind of just going around doing things because that's what you need to do. But in this game, you could do things like acquire debt, and, you know, that has consequences. Or you could uh, pick up an encounter card. Maybe you need to do a observation check and your character is not very observant so you're like chances are i am not going to pass this observation check so i don't even want to try it because a bad thing is likely to happen yeah. and i mean that might benefit you because that bad thing won't happen but at the same time it's like well if we're not even trying then we're not going to be able to solve these mysteries get the clues and things we need and then we're going to lose anyway yeah so i will say on that on that note there's kind of some times where i feel like you're stuck in a situation where it's like, I don't think there's any way I can win this. Like you're on one side of the map. It would take somebody a while to get over to you or a few turns mm. and you have to do this skill check that you can't do, or you have to fight these monsters that you're not good, good at fighting. Um, and the just based on your character choice. But I mean, that can also be a strength of a game. The fact that like your character matters that like they have passive abilities and then they have active abilities. And just the fact that, you know, you choose a character based on what you want it to represent, what you want its scores to be, what you want its health and sanity to be, and it impacts how you play the game. You kind of have to steer yourself towards what your character is good at. Um, right. Uh, one thing I'll go over is like combat. Combat in in this is something to be I feel like avoided at all co costs if you can help it. You know, you, you have monsters pouring out of one of these gates, and they start to pile up, and <laughs> you reach a point where you're like, we have to go there. <laughs> we have to get to that spot. And that's that that's a rough task to kind of start digging through those uh, monster encounters. But uh, when you actually do it, it's really one heck of an accomplishment. Um, sure. So, anything else in the pros? Um, well, this is a game where everyone, like I said, is, is included. You don't have one player who's doing everything... You don't have one character who feels like they're being favored, like in Betrayal, uh, at the house on the hill. Uh, usually the game is skewed toward one team or the other. You don't, well, again, this game is skewed, but you don't have that within the, the cooperative gameplay of the players trying to stop these people. Everyone's doing something. Everyone has an equal shot at being helpful in some way, whether that's buying a bunch of things that could be useful or, you know, there's some characters that are stronger so they're fighting all the monsters, and then you have other characters that can boost your sanity by... I think there's a musician who can boost your sanity by yeah. playing music for you. That'd be like when you rest or something like something that. Something like that. Um, so that's, that's nice, because a lot of cooperative games, you're just like, well, my player doesn't have a useful skill, and I'm basically the useless team member. I am the weakest link. I don't <laughs> want to be on this team anymore. It's a, it's a lousy feeling yeah. to feel like you're the useless person on your team. But I don't feel like you really get that here. Everyone yeah. is so important that... They're vital to playing the game. Basically. I can compare it to something like um, like Pandemic. Pandemic is another good example of a cooperative game where everybody kind of matters. And it's also another game where you can lose kind of out of nowhere. You just start sure. drawing those Epidemic cards. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, we're, we're right there. And then you're just overrun. It just happens really quick. But... Um, 
in that game you have like the medic and things like that so the yeah. medic's a little bit more important than most people or the was it the transporter dispatcher the one that can move people um, yeah. so those are kind of nice but um, you're still vital as a player so I think those are the kind of games that find the co-op mechanic and kind of find that nice place for it where everybody can kind of feel like they contribute to it and you don't have like one player telling everybody what to do because this game almost punishes you for that I feel like if people aren't able to act on their own and make their decisions you kind of get punished in this game but you have to communicate you have to work as a team too you can't just be like well I'm gonna go this way not tell anyone I'm going this way fight all the monsters and then get myself killed like yeah. a silly person <laughs> um, that's not gonna work um, that's a pro um, the fact that you can that when you die you aren't completely out of the game yeah, you get a new character, which is great. Because this game is its very long. If I died within the first 45 minutes and my friends were playing for another hour and a half and I was just kind of hanging out, I would not be a happy person. That would suck. Because that's what happens in um, Dead of Winter. I Dead of Winter, die, yeah. You, you, just, can, you get stuck there. If, you're the, if you get voted out and they think you're the traitor, you're kind of just sitting there waiting for everybody to finish the game. Um, yeah, yeah that's not that's not a good way to make your game. Um, we'll be talking about Dead of Winter soon enough. Um, but in terms of what kind of groups you would recommend it for, like kind of a final score, some final thoughts on it? Oh, well, this is probably a game for at least people who like to take them out periodically, like more of an intermediate player at the very least because there's mm. it, they, first of all you need the patience to sit there and play this game for two to three hours sometimes it's more like four i don't think we've ever really had a game That's that long lot. but i've heard of people who have so you know keep that in mind um and you know there's a lot of different components it's not something that people are just gonna pick up instantly uh you know Especially because each character is so unique and different. You're never going to have a character unless, I guess, you play the same one over and over. Where you, yeah. you, you pick it up instantly. Cause usually we just hand them out at random. We don't even let people choose. Because then we're all fighting over the ones that are more attractive <laughs> and more stronger or whatever. You know, whatever it happens to be that week. Um, so, definitely that. And also, some of the cards... I wouldn't say they're graphic because obviously they're short little blurbs you can't really get that graphic but they're suggestive in a way that can make someone who's a little squeamish uncomfortable like I'm more on the squeamish side I don't really go for the whole horror thing and there are a few cards in this basic um not basic but this core game that actually kind of make me a little bit uncomfortable especially because we tend to play this game late at night and there's some creepy tree just brushing against my window <laughs> and the winds are howling and maybe there's a thunder i don't know there's just some things about this game that make me a little bit uncomfortable but luckily the the cards aren't graphic and gross which i, I do like because yeah. i feel like that just adds another totally unnecessary level which i'm not a fan of yeah i mean that kind of can speak to the strength of the theme if you can get like creeped out by playing a tabletop game that's kind of a <laughs> That's a, a strong theme, and like horror does kind of like run through this whole thing. It's very, like, very Lovecraftian, as we've we've talked. Um, and his work is obviously very much on the the unknown horrors kind of realm of horror. And the uh, yeah, I would definitely agree in terms of the the type of group. Like, definitely at least immediate inter sorry intermediate in terms of skill. And I wouldn't put like beginners to tabletop gaming into this game or anyone who's had too much to drink yeah. <laughs> avoid that drunk party game yeah. time yeah this is not an under the influence kind of game <laughs> for the sake of your soul do not do it <laughs> we've tried to do it it's horrible it's a horror in and of itself <laughs> just do not do it need sober people who have played games before and don't mind a little bit of horror squeamishness. Yeah, and have a high board game stamina because, like, I That's feel like there too. there is there is people like who love board who love tabletop games, love board games, but ones that drag on for a little bit too long, it's just they they don't want to play them. Um, I mean, we have a pretty high stamina, and even sometimes this game runs a little bit long for us. Uh, but and we usually three is probably the most people we've played with uh, the mo the most times that we've played with three people. Um, right. We've played beyond that, but 
three is our number that we play more often than anything else, so it would be on the shorter side. Um, but and still can run a little bit long sometimes. Um, in terms of final score, what would you give it? Uh, I think this is a solid seven. I'm giving it a seven just because it's a very long. Uh, B. We're just talking about the base game here. There is a lot of repetition. There are not a lot of encounter cards. Um, and it's just hard. Like, I honestly, I, I'm not typically a sore loser, but this game makes me cranky because I will sit there <laughs> for two and a half hours and literally, like, a turn, and I just lose. And I'm like, I put all this effort, I found all these clues, I killed all these annoying monsters, and now I lose. And it is horrible. It's a horrible <laughs> feeling. It's, it's like Dark Souls bad. Just that soul-crushing feeling of just trying to fight this thing and then you're like, well, I lost again. Surprise, surprise. Harumph. I'm gonna go have some ice cream now. <laughs> Make myself uh, feel better. Um, I definitely feel like once you once you get that first win, though, it'll make it all the more sweeter. I don't know. I've never won. so <laughs> We'll get there eventually. We'll get there. We'll talk about it someday when yeah. I win. Uh, we'll have a, a, an update to the video once we've actually won at this game. But um, I would I'd probably put it around the same ballpark. I feel like I do 7.5 a lot, but I'm going to I'm gonna give it a 7.5. Um, it, it's a good game from the thematic aspect, which I really like theme in a game. I don't like when you just take a bunch of game mechanics and then throw a theme on top that doesn't really matter. Um, the theme really matters in this game. Um, if, it, if it had a different theme, it would be a completely different game. Um and the I really appreciate that. So I'm definitely going to stick with a 7.5. Just be wary of you're going to have to spend a lot of time setting up, breaking down, and playing the game. And there's a good, better than often shot that you're going to lose. Um, and, you know, if you do win, you know, let us know down below. If you do win at the game, tell us how long it took you, which was your ancient one. Um... But I would definitely recommend it for people who really like thematic games, like horror, like Lovecraft. If you like like Lovecraft, you would have to get this game. It's almost a must must buy because um, you'll get all the references and everything, um, which is really cool. They reference a lot of his work, and so in terms of actually where you can find this game, um, if you look down in the description down below, we're gonna have some links. Um, doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps out the channel. And feel free to go out and tell us about your experiences with Eldritch Horror. So, um, this is Elaine, I'm Jeremy, and this is another episode of Never Enough Gaming. Um, thanks for joining. See you next time. <laughs>